Hey everybody, it's Amber Carnes from BodyPositiveYoga.com and I'm here today to share a little yoga flow with you that's going to help uh, if you have any low back pain or hip pain going on. I know a lot of you, when you're pregnant, you get low back and hip pain. Uh, a lot of us who aren't pregnant get that too. So this uh, particular sequence is going to help you to open the hips and hopefully help with some of the low back pain you might be having. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to build a little tower out of some props that's going to keep us supported while we explore some deep belly breathing. And then we're going to lie on our backs, do some hip openers, and then we'll move on to some other poses. So of course, as with any other exercise, you want to check with your doctor before you do this, so whether you should lie on your back or not, which we will be doing for some of this sequence. So please make sure that all that's clear before you start. And for this practice, you'll need a bolster or a couch cushion or a really big firm pillow. You'll need two blocks or a big thick books or something like that. And you'll need a strap or either like a tie or um, a tie from a bathrobe or something long um, that you can use uh, to make your arms longer. So gather your props and I'll see you on the mat. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is build a little tower here. <laughs> this is a great position for you to be in um, if you're in Shavasana or if you just wanna rest and breathe for a little bit, which we're gonna do at the beginning of the practice. So what I like to do is take one block on the high height and the other block long ways on the lower height and then take the bolster and lean it up against this little tower that you're making here. So you may have to play with that a little bit, but feel like you get it in a place where it's kind of stable. And then you're gonna sit right in front of the bolster and then just lie back onto the tower that you built. Now, you can rest your hands on your belly or if you have some blocks or something you can put under your arms so they're not just falling out to the sides. Or this might feel really good and you wanna try that. Okay, so you built your tower. <laughs> now you're gonna come and you're gonna sit your butt right in front of the bolster and then go ahead and lie back. So you're in a nice reclining position. And I just have my knees bent and the soles of my feet on the mat. I'm just gonna take my hands and rest them on my thighs. If this isn't comfortable, what you can do is take your feet together and the knees wide and then take blocks and place them under the knees to support you. Otherwise, you can just bend your knees. So we're gonna breathe here for a few minutes. So just place your hands on your belly, close your eyes, and just start to tune into your breath. Maybe at first just noticing what's happening with the breath. Where do you feel it in your body? Where does it originate? Do you feel like it's getting stuck anywhere? And just observing those things, just noticing without worrying too much about what that means or if it's good or bad. And the next time you draw a breath in through the nose, just invite the breath to arise beneath your hands. So breathe all the way down into the low belly, into that lower abdominal breathing space. And feel the belly rise as you take an inhale breath and fall back down as you take an exhale breath. Notice what other sensations you might be able to feel. Maybe your back pressing into the bolster, your sit bones grounding down into the floor. And just continue this deep abdominal breath for a few more rounds. Really deeply inhaling, filling the belly up, and then drawing the navel lightly towards the spine on the exhale to draw all the air out. Really contract the diaphragm before you reach for another inhale. and then slowly flutter the eyes open. You can just bring the hands down to the mat and we're gonna go ahead and sit up. So just press your hands down and bring yourself to upright. We're gonna move the tower and then we'll come to lie on our backs and do a few things there. 
Okay, so you're gonna lie on the floor and you wanna have your strap handy. So just have that nearby. So I've got my soles of my feet on the floor, my knees bent, and you really wanna scoop your tailbone down toward your feet so more of your back comes into contact with the floor. So I'm just gonna place my hands on the floor, maybe widen my feet to almost the width of my mat and just crawl my feet a little bit away from my butt so I'm not too crunched up. And we're just gonna start a windshield wiper motion with the legs. So letting the knees drop down to one side, coming back up through center, letting them drop down to the other side. Nice and slow, you can just let the feet roll to the insides and the outsides as it needs to. So we're getting a little blood flow in the low back. We're starting to take the hips through their range of motion. And if you'd like to create a little vinyasa here and sync up the breath with the movement, it's an inhale breath as you come up through center and then exhale as you go down to one side. Inhale as you come back up, exhale back down to the other side. So keeping with that deep belly breath that we did before. And then go ahead and come to center. So I'm just gonna scoot my feet in a little bit. I'm gonna pick up my right foot and bring my knee toward my chest and then go ahead and start to do some hip circles. So when I come close to my body, I'm bending my knee and then as you go away from your body, you're gonna extend the leg. So just let your hips rock from side to side. We really wanna take the leg through the full range of motion here and just do it nice and slow. It's definitely not a race. Go ahead and switch directions. Continuing to breathe. And return that foot back down. And we'll do the other side. Think about scooping the head of your femur into your hip socket. Like you're kind of trying to get the last little bit of peanut butter out of that jar, scooping around. Get the synovial fluid moving and the joints. Warm up the joints. So a lot of times if we have back pain, it's because our hips are super tight. And for those of us who are carrying children, <laughs> our center of gravity is a little bit off, so our body doesn't quite know what to do with itself. All right, so once you finish that side, you're gonna return both feet down to the mat. And then we'll go ahead and take the strap. You wanna loop the strap around the ball of the foot and take the leg straight up into the air. So we want the leg long and the arms long. So if you're trying to be really close by to your face and your knee is bent and you're straining up off the floor, that's not what we want. So take your leg as far away from your face as you need to, to be able to have the leg comfortably straight. So for some of us, <laughs> our hamstrings are talking to us right now and that's okay. Just breathe into the hamstring. It's kind of just a little imagination experiment. Inhale deep into the belly, and then as you exhale, see if you can imagine sending the breath to wherever you're feeling the sensation, wherever you're feeling the stretch. And just hold here and breathe for a few minutes. If you like, you can take that other leg and lengthen it along the floor and really press out through the heel so the foot doesn't go lazy and just fall off to the side. Really press through the heel. If you do that and it hurts your low back, just keep the knee bent. All right, so we'll take both sides of the strap in the left hand. Take your right thumb and put it into your right hip crease so you can sort of roll that hip away from you. And then just come across your body about three or four inches and you're gonna feel some sensation in the outside of this right leg. If you come over like this and your hip rolls up off the ground, you went too far. And just breathe here. All right, we're gonna come back up to center. You can either bring your foot back down to the floor or you can just catch the strap with the other foot and we're gonna do it on the other side. So, 
leg is long, arms are long. This side might feel completely different than the other. Think about flexing your toes toward your face. Notice if the kneecap is kind of to the center, to the midline of the body, or if your leg has splayed out to one side or maybe to the inside even. And then you're going to take both sides of the strap in the right hand. Take your left thumb, put it in your hip crease, roll that hip away from you, and then just come across the body just a few inches until you feel that sensation in the outside of the left leg. All right, come back to center. We're gonna let go of the strap, bring that foot back down. <clears throat> this time, you're gonna bring your right knee into your chest and then take the knee wide, like out toward your armpit or toward your shoulder. And then you're just gonna bring the lower leg up toward the ceiling. And I'm gonna show you with a strap. <clears throat> just put the strap around the foot and then think about pulling that knee down toward the floor, toward your um, toward your armpit. Now, you want to make sure that this hip stays down. We don't want to roll over to one side. So maybe even take your hand and press that hip down. You can let this knee kind of fall out to the side. But the main thing we want to work on is bringing that knee down toward the floor. And I've got my foot flexed. It's like I'm doing kind of half a sumo squat on the ceiling. And this is actually happy baby pose. We're just doing it on one side. So if you know happy baby and you want to do both legs at the same time, that's totally fine. But sometimes one side, it's a little bit easier on us if our hips are really tight or our back is really painful. All right, so we're going to remove the strap. We'll do that on the other side. Bring your left knee up and out toward your armpit, lasso your foot, and go ahead and find that on the other side. So really bring the knee down toward the shoulder, toward the floor. Keep this hip down with your hand and breathe. All right, so now we're gonna release that strap and return that foot to the mat. <clears throat> And we're gonna to come to our hands and knees. So gently just roll to one side and then you can press yourself up and we'll come to hands and knees. <clears throat> if your knees are sensitive, I recommend putting a blanket underneath them. Um, you can also take another yoga mat and kind of double that up and stick it underneath your knees. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a couple of rounds of cat and cow. So bring the hands a little bit forward of the shoulders. Let the index fingers point straight ahead and spread the fingers wide. Knees are directly under the hips and the feet come straight back. You can tuck or untuck the toes, it's up to you. So on the inhale breath, let the tailbone rise, belly drops down toward the mat, lift the chest, lift the gaze. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, draw the belly in, arch the upper back like an angry cat, head comes down last. We'll go the other way. Inhale, tailbone rises, belly drops down toward the mat, lift the chest, lift the gaze. Exhale, tailbone tucks, belly draws toward the spine, heart draws toward the spine, head comes down last, just like a Halloween cat. Inhale, lift, exhale, tuck. So you're gonna do this at your own pace with your own breath for a couple of more rounds. Really flexing, extending the spine, finding that whole range of movement all through the spine, pressing through the hands, really pressing into the upper back on that arch. And coming to neutral. So we're gonna do a couple of lunges next. All right, so you're gonna watch your blocks for this next part and we're gonna do some, some low lunges. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is have the blocks to kind of give me a little bit more room to get my leg through. And especially if you have a belly that's growing, then you're going to want to not kind of run into yourself here. So I'm going to take both blocks and bring them kind of to the left half of my mat. And then step my right foot forward. And I'm using the blocks to keep my chest lifted up. My right toes are pointed straight ahead. My left knee is down on the mat and I've got my toe extended. You can tuck that toe if you want or keep it long. And then I'm just gonna start to drop my hips down toward the mat. So the main thing you wanna check for is this knee, we don't wanna go past the ankle. So if that happens, you just need to scoot your foot forward. <clears throat> really press down through equally through your foot and also through your knee so you're rooted down to the mat and then just let the hips sink down toward the mat. So you can bring your hand up on your thigh, you can stay on the block, you can walk the block back and really just find a way to start to let the hips relax, let gravity do the work. And breathe. If you feel like your belly is crashing into your thigh, just kind of move it off to the side so you can move it to the center. If that still doesn't work for you, you can crawl your right foot a little more toward the side of your mat so you've got a little wider base for your lunge. All right, so I'm gonna bring both my hands to the blocks and I'm gonna straighten this leg and then just drag that foot back so my knees meet up. I'll walk my blocks to the other side and bring my left foot forward this time. So again, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm stable here, and then I'm gonna start to sink my pelvis down towards the mat. Now for me, it's a little more comfortable to bring my hand up to my thigh and kind of give myself a little bit of leverage here, or you can keep your hands on the blocks. Maybe, the, maybe it will be more comfortable for you to be this way with your hands kind of framing your foot. Just experiment, see what feels good to your body. Make sure you make room for your belly so you're either going to kind of just move everything to the center or crawl your foot out toward the side of the mat. Lift the chest, let the pelvis sink down toward the mat, opening up through the hip flexors. Keep breathing into the belly. All right, so I'm gonna plant my hands on the blocks and then drag this foot back to meet the other. And then I'm gonna to come to standing. So I'll bring my blocks out in front and then just step one foot up and step the other foot up. So you kind of come into a low uh, forward fold here. And then I'm just gonna roll up gently, one vertebra at a time until I come to standing. We're gonna do a couple of poses here that are really great for the hips and the low back standing poses. And so the first one we're gonna do is Parjva Konasana, side angle pose. To come into this, you're going to stand facing the long side of your mat, and then go ahead and widen your feet to a wide-legged stance. Turn your right toes out so they face right to the short side of your mat, and the left toes in, just about 30 degrees. You might have to play with the angle of that foot see what's comfortable for you, for your knee, for your hip. And then what we're gonna do is bend into this front knee. Again, make sure the knee doesn't come past the ankle. If it does, just crawl that foot forward a little bit. Take your right forearm, place it on your right thigh, take your left hand to your hip, and spin your chest open. So this is a twist, and it's also a lunge, and it's a lot of things, but we really want that twisting motion. So your shoulders are stacked one over the other. Use that leverage of your arm on your thigh to get your chest open. And then you can lift your arm straight up into the air. Take a moment here. Breathe. And if you'd like, you can try taking that arm up and over the ear with the palm facing the floor. So this way you have one long line from your back heel all the way up the side body and out that arm. And then use that lifted arm to cartwheel yourself back up. We're gonna parallel the feet and then left toes go out, right toes go in. Go ahead and bend through that front knee Left forearm comes to thigh, spin the chest open, and then lift that arm up. 
and you can either stay here or maybe try the arm up and over your ear. And then experiment with where your neck feels good to look. Maybe up at the lifted arm, maybe at the floor, maybe just straight ahead in front of you. And breathe. And then use that lifted arm to bring you back up to center. Parallel the feet. And then just step the feet together. That's it. Thanks for downloading and practicing with me. I hope you come see me again at bodypositiveyoga.com. Namaste.